Money Mantra Money Mantra Manage your mind You will fall behind if you do not train your mind. If you want to change that, go to mindstate.biz. Join the peak and tune in for live meditation and brain training and take your performance to yet another level. Enter code Money Mantra for an exclusive discount. That's mindstate.biz. All right, my people. So check it out. We're here with another interview on the Money Mantra. And I'm going to introduce y'all to Elizabeth Cambridge. She's a very interesting young lady. She is a podcaster and does a couple other things in her life that I'm going to let her let you know about. So, Elizabeth, just tell us, you know, a couple of little personal details, nothing too crazy. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Hey, everyone. Um, <laughs> so, yes, I do have a podcast. I'm a storyteller. Um, I guess all of that creatively. And then boring side I just I'm a I work as a I work from home for a customer service um position for a small floor plan company um but yeah that's what I do I'm a podcaster and a storyteller that's what's up that's what's up so let's get right into this Elizabeth so let let, let me ask you this do you practice any form of mindfulness (laughs) not not like I should I want to well you know what yeah I do I I daydream a lot okay I I kind of just do a lot of sitting and thinking. That's great. Um, no breathing, though. Not, not a lot of, like, focusing on breathing, but just, I just do a lot of sitting and thinking and okay. daydreaming. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And how, how, how do you find that helpful? <laughs> I'm not sure if it's really that helpful because I think what I end up doing is um, creating, creating these ob- obsessive thoughts. Or not, I just go around and around in circles gotcha. a lot. Um, sometimes the thinking, I'll, I'll think something just to death and then, (laughs) and then my brain gives up and then, you know, I move on to something else. But, um, you know, it's a lot of circling and not a lot of resolving, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, um, let me ask you this. So, you know, this is money mantra. So our focus is really, um, mindfulness, finances, and trying to mend the two together and seeing where we could bridge those gaps. Because I believe they're two very important things that kind of go one in one with each other. Um, let me know where your different streams of revenue are and how you earn them. Uh, so I work from home, customer service job. Um, and that's, I'm a 1099. So okay. uh, I'm still learning about that process and what... what, what uh, so for anybody that might not know what a 1099 is, mm-hmm. like explain that to us, at least from your knowledge. I see obviously yeah. you're, still, you're still learning from it yourself. So. From my knowledge, it's that I don't get any taxes taken out of my check. Like it's just right up front, no taxes, no, no, nothing is being taken out. Um, but. But at the end of the year, <laughs> uh, during tax time, I'm going to have to pay all that money back. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm, I'm kind of stressing it. about that right now. You got yeah. it. Um, I live in that world myself, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then from this podcast, I've been able to, I'm lucky enough to, to be on this uh, Chicago podcast co-op network. Um, and so they find sponsors and they give me a, you know, a 10 second ad read. I read it before my podcast and then I get 50 bucks. So I get 50 bucks per sponsor read. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like that. I'm going to have to look into that myself right there. I like that. Okay. Sounds good. So um, l- let me ask you this. So describe in detail, all right, in detail, that, that moment in your life where you just had any, any experience during your worst financial time. And um, I also want to know, what was your mental attitude like during this time? Ooh. Um, you know, I've never, I've never really been great with money. Um, I moved here, I moved to Chicago to attend DePaul, got into DePaul, worked as a student assistant where I only made like $8 an hour. Um, I was living with my uncle at the time and it was not working out. So (laughs) just randomly, so, oh, so I got this huge refund from school. It was like 1200 bucks, the most I'd ever seen in my account ever. (laughs) And I got really excited and I thought, oh, I could just get an apartment. 
maybe not the best idea. I was just like, I, I could just get an apartment, you know? <laughs> That'll solve all my problems. So I went out looking for an apartment, not realizing that um, I'm making the rent every two, like, yeah, I'm making the rent a month. So that's not with like food and like clothes and other things that I need. I'm, I'm just making the rent. Right. Um, so that started off pretty bad. Uh, just, you know, just not, not keeping up with the rent, not being able to eat, like having to choose, um, you know, taking like 50 bucks out of the rent just to go grocery shopping. Mm. Um, man, that was just, that was, that was not good. Um, and, and really, honestly, still kind of struggling with that decision. And it's still biting me in the butt, even though I'm not in that place anymore. Because I, I still owe some money, so some, ah. some back rent. Um, so I'd say, yeah, those uh, just, just difficult times trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life. Like, how can I make more money? What, like, uh, and just having the fear of constantly being kicked out and not having anywhere to, to, to stay in a sure. place like Chicago. That's like, sure. that I'm not, you know, I'm not from here. So. Hmm. Wow. So <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's tough. You know, I know I've been there. It's, um, you have to make real decisions and, and then sometimes you have to uh, lean towards a way that you don't want to lean and, and you kind of have some regrets and things you're not too comfortable with from yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, I get it. I get it. I've been there. Uh, let me know what exactly is it that you learned from that experience and what insight would you want to give anybody that's listening right now from that experience? What would you want them to take away from that? I just say plan, plan accordingly. Like you can, you can do things, you can do whatever you want. You can, you know, have an apartment if you want to, but just plan, have some backups um, and save, uh, mm. yes. save your yes, money. Yes. Even if it's, I mean, I, I used to, I would hear from my parents like, oh, well, even a quarter, even a quarter, even like a dime, <laughs> anything. I'd be like, eh, whatever. Um, but man, you know, I've learned that when I have money, I, I, it, it burns a hole. Like I need to do something with it right away. I need to like have it go to where it's supposed to or I'll get too excited and I'm like, ooh, yeah. you know, because I'm always like, now, 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 now. How can I satisfy myself right now, right now, right now, instead yeah. of like, thinking about planning and just thinking about the future. Got you. Yeah, planning is key. I've definitely learned that myself. Yeah. Great advice. <laughs> um, so listen, we, we all reach a point in our life where we want to we wanna grow. We know we need to grow. I want you to really describe that moment, okay, that exact moment in your life when you just had enough with a situation uh, with another person or, or maybe even yourself and you just had to make a, t a change or a tough decision. Um, and maybe this is like super simple for a lot of people, but I, I would say ending my most, my la my, re my relationship, um, okay. it was a, you know, it lasted for almost seven years Okay. and we were both in this little crummy studio apartment, not doing what we're supposed to do, not saving any money, you know, honestly, we were spending it all on weed mm. <laughs> and food. Mm. That was mostly it. <laughs> like, that's where some of the rent money went to as well. Fuel, you know, fuel. You know, oh, <laughs> um, I just got tired. I, I mean, I guess after seven years, I just got tired of it. I wasn't doing anything with my life. I wasn't going anywhere. I was getting really angry and depressed. And I, and I would kind of nip at him, mm. I think, um, as a way of just dealing with I don't know, my anxiety um, and, and looking for him to like just blame everything on him so that I didn't have to deal with, I didn't, I didn't have to, you know, deal with anything. I could right. just blame all my issues on him. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think that was just kind of driving me crazy. I think I needed to just grow up uh, and fix my financial situation, like do, do this podcast, if this podcast is what I'm trying to do, like. Yeah, so I had to end, I had to end that that relationship, um, and things have been better. I think, I mean, health wise, mm -hmm. mentally, um, just in so many ways. So really, just ending that relationship and owning up to my own faults. And now that I'm by myself, I have no one to just blame. I have no go to person. I can go, oh, no punching bag. <laughs> so, 
you have to take ownership. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm my own. I have to be my own punching bag. Um, and, and realize that there are things that I don't like. I can change them. Like, and I can change them. Like, it doesn't have to just be like this. Right. But, you know, sometimes it's that comfort zone. And it's just sometimes it's just more comfortable to be <laughs> kind of bummy, I guess, yeah. in a sense. Instead of, like, actually doing things to change and, and become a better person. Sure. Yeah, trust me. I, I've, I've been there. I know what it's like. <laughs> I know what it's like, but I'm glad to hear that you've, uh, you overcame that and you've seen it. Yeah. You know, so that's great. Yeah. So, um, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick little break. Um, we're going to get into these last few questions. These questions are a little bit quicker and, um, you know, um, just give us a little bit more insight on your journey and, um, we'll get right back to it. What's good, my people? So I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but video has 135% greater organic reach over audio, photos, or other type of media posts. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, a podcaster, an artist, or anyone else trying to get an audio message across, the best way to do this is to combine it with video and photo. And you could do this at wave.video. That's W-A-V-V-E dot video. Just go to their website. You could get a free account. And if you need any support, contact them. I've personally been able to work with Baird Hall. He's the founder. He's an awesome guy. He helped me set up everything for Money Mantra. So please go to wave.video. That's W-A-V-V-E dot video. All right. All right. So we're back here with Elizabeth Cambridge and we're going to get right into these final questions to get this insight. So what is your money mantra? My money mantra. <laughs> um, I'd say one thing that I I guess one statement that I, I that comes to mind and I think about a lot is is to live as many lifetimes as possible. Live as many lifetimes in one life as possible. Wow. Um, that's what I want to do. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to try and find a way to do that. I don't want to ever be stuck. Hmm. I don't ever want to be like in a we were talking about uh earlier in a box somewhere just like I, I want to be able to know that I could I could I can I can do what I want to do um but I need to I need to just plan accordingly for that but so but yeah that's that's what I think of the most is just to live as many lifetimes as possible is is this fun is what I'm doing fun am I enjoying this wow you know <laughs> if I'm yeah. not then I don't need to I don't who am I doing this for am I doing sure. it for myself because if I'm not uh, I don't know. I, I think I get lost in like trying to do things for other people. So I always have to remind myself, like, this is about me. Wait a minute. What about you? What about you? What about right. you? What do you? What What is it that you want? Um, and I think for me, just trying to stay as focused as possible. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I like that. I like that. What is your biggest weakness when dealing with money? Man. It's the, uh, what is the word? Um, not spontaneity, but uh, I, I, I can't, I impulse. get ex impulse. impulse. I'm really impulsive. That's my weakness. Um, I think with like a lot of things in life in general, is I'm really impulsive. I get really excited. Mm. Um, and I'm not, I, all of a sudden my concern is just like about the now <laughs> i'm not thinking about anything else i'm not thinking about tomorrow or the next day after that i'm just like ah, it'll be fine it'll be fine but i want some pizza right now so i'm gonna get some pizza even if that pizza is like 25 bucks hey. and i can use that 25 bucks to actually go grocery shopping and buy probably like a whole list of items but i'm gonna get the pizza because i'm like oh. Because that pizza is fire. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> we live in Chicago and that exactly. pizza is fire. <laughs> so, uh, impulsiveness. Got you. So, how about your biggest strength when it comes to money? Biggest strength? <laughs> I think making money. Okay. I think finding a way to make... I think I'll always be able to find a way to have money. To make money or to get a to get a job or to get something I can, you know. Um, yeah, I want to be better at that. But um, as far as like making money work for me, but I think I'm I'm good at, at always being able to find money somehow in some kind of way. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, 
Tell us a personal routine or a daily habit that keeps you focused on your goals. I try and write. Again, like I get, I have sometimes obsessive thoughts or thoughts that go into circles. If I can actually write it down and I see it on paper, that keeps me more focused or even keeping a checklist. Like I, I, I hate doing that, but <laughs> um, uh, just, yeah, some sort of checklist that I can go, okay, I did that, I can check that off. Or I have yet to do that. Oh, Elizabeth, remember, you still have to do this. Um, and I'll like, I'll put it in front of my computer. I'll put it to where I'm going to see it every day. I'll put it on the mirror. Um, so yeah, just really writing things down, getting things out of my head mm. so that I can actually see it and it's not, I'm not chasing it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, I definitely use that a lot for um, goals that I set for myself, like checking off lists, putting down tasks and, and marking them off. It just, it feels good. Have feels you, good. have you ever... Has there ever been a task that you don't write down on purpose because you know you don't want to keep yourself accountable for it? <laughs> um, there used to be, but now I write them all down. Even See, the ones good. I hate, the tedious ones, the ones that I don't want to do because they got to get done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is, a, this is something that I, I just, I want to hear something, you know, something you're passionate about. Like, what is the greatness that you're looking forward to every day in your life, whether it's personal, creative, business just what is that greatness you're looking forward to every single day maybe it's sounds egotistical but i'm always worried if concerned if i'm right okay am i doing something right am i treating people right am i um yeah am, am, am i right in this situation um i really want to grow and i really and i think part of that is I just want to be my best self. I want to be the best version of myself. Um, I guess that's why I spent a lot of time just thinking and analyzing and going over interactions and going over, but, but sometimes that could be really bad because then I'll overthink things, sure. I'll overanalyze things, but um, I'm always concerned about um, if I'm right. And I guess that, I don't know, being right, I guess, is being great, is, 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 the, is like the um, person on the mountain that I want to be, <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> the, the rightest person in the room, I guess. That's a thing. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm doing things right. I'm not making, I'm, like, I'm always checking if I'm, am I making a mistake? Am, am I not, is there something that I haven't that I caught on to yet? Am I missing something? Sure. Um, yeah. It's awesome. That's awesome. So tell me, what is a, a resource that you have that helps you with your money mantra? Um, something that helps you follow the mantra you mentioned earlier? Being around creative people. I feel like surrounding myself with creative people um, and constantly finding things to inspire me to realize that, oh, I, I can have, I have this whole lifetime and I can do whatever I want with it because, oh, that person's doing this and that person's doing that. And like, oh, I could, I could do that too. Um, so surrounding my, myself with people who actually believe that for themselves. That's awesome. Because there are, there are a lot of people who are just like, uh, you know, I'm a robot. This is what I do. I just, <laughs> you know, I just, I go to work nine to five and that's it. Um, yeah. yeah. Robots aren't very inspiring. No, right? not at all. <laughs> How about a book? or film that you recommend and tell us why. Hmm. <laughs> the film that I always uh I don't know, if I could recommend if you if you're interested you should you should watch it. It's interesting. It's called Mr. Nobody. Okay, I've heard of it. With Jared Leto and yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time, but um I loved it when I saw it because it it shows you all of the decisions how the decisions you make um, shape your life. Okay. Like for, I mean, even something as simple as, am I gonna eat cereal or am I gonna eat eggs? And how uh, that, just every little decision you make oh yeah. will affect you or someone else and all of the ways that your life can go. Again, all of the, all of the possibilities, all of the possibilities, all of the lifetimes, all of everything that you can be doing, um, it's all possible. Like it's, and maybe, I mean, I'm weird, but it may be some other universe or dimension. It's already been, it's already playing out anyway. I don't, you never know. <laughs> hey, I'm with you on it 100%. <laughs> so Mr. Nobody, it was really, it's really just interesting. 
to watch. Awesome. So, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so here's here's a big question. This is probably a um, question I think is the most interesting. In detail, I want you to tell me what you would do or maybe have done with your first million dollars. Ooh. With my first million? I want to help so many people. Um, man. I always thought that I would... Maybe go go to a neighborhood that like a, a low income neighborhood, a, a neighborhood no one, I don't know, maybe even like like south south side of Chicago. What I would love to do is start by cleaning up, like cleaning up everything, like hiring a bunch of just sanitation, just every just cleaning up trash, everything. Um, I think that if people saw, if maybe if people had pride in where they stayed. It, it would eventually kind of like spread to their spirit maybe and that yeah. would spread to other things but I would start with like cleaning up I would I don't know how you would even do this but I would throw money at schools I would I would love to go into all like uh impoverished neighborhoods and buy up all the like empty lots all the empty houses all the empty stores and just just fill it just give people jobs like create businesses, like just um, give people houses for free and just say, hey, you can just stay here for like six months. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll get everything. You just mm. focus on what you want to do. I think that, um, man, if people had the opportunity to just do what they wanted to do, do what they're really passionate about, they would be so much happier. <sighs> Not the thing that you think you have to do to get this, to get, you know, just to eat. Like, I'll take care of all that stuff. You just chill just if you if you like making books if you like if you like putting i mean anything you like painting you like you like doing hair you like cutting hair you like man do it anyway so i whatever i could do to 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 make it possible for people to just like relax I, I'll, I'll i'll feed you i'll I'll do whatever just do what you want to do man yeah yeah that's what i would do <laughs> that sounds great that sounds great i'm i'm, I'm with that that 100 percent with you on that all right, so we're wrapping up here. So just give us some some final personal advice, and um, of course, let us know where we could find you, contact you. Um, again, like realize I would say realize all of the possibilities that you have, um, and that you really can do whatever you want. Like you, you really can. Um, it's all about changing the way you think about things and your perspective. Um, so never forget that. The, if you're here until you're 80, if you're here until you're 50, that, that's a long time. Do what you want to do. Do what makes you happy. And uh, yeah, if you want to hear more of me talking, you can always uh, come see me. Uh, I'll be hosting The Moth in December. That's a big storytelling event. I tell stories on the side. I'm also hosting a storytelling open mic every first monday of the month in rogers park um you can go to randomconversations.net to check out my podcast go to itunes i'm on soundcloud i'm on t twitter random conversations with elizabeth um everywhere so check me out love it <laughs> elizabeth thank you very much for your time i appreciate it greatly great insight um my people thank you for listening and as yeah. always Peace, blessings, hundreds of lessons to you and everybody listening. Yeah, Till next time, Money Mantra. <laughs>